everybody. Sure. Let, let's talk about, so, I, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to jump. I'm going to build this product. I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to do it alone or not. Yeah. Am, am I going to, I have to build a team. I can't yeah. possibly do everything by myself. But let's talk about the good and the bad of co-founders. You, you have a great take on this whole thing. And, um, and I highly suggest people go, go read your post on this. But well, a lot of people we see, we see Sergey and Larry. We see uh, um, Larry and David. Chad Larry and, and David, Steve. Chad and Steve, Mark and Eduardo. <laughs> um, so talk to us about what, you know, let's talk about the good things about having a co-founder. Um, shared risk, shared, what, 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 what is the good that you see from so, your... Um, what I think is that we have a few extreme successes that draw the wrong conclusions. Mm -hmm. So if you do want to read it on my blog, it's called The Co-Founder Mythology. And if you search that, you may find it. Um, the Co-Founder Mythology is this. We know the Larry and Sergey and David and Jerry stories. We know Steve. And Steve. Yeah. And, uh, and no, Steve and Chad. Oh, you're talking about YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who's Steve? Apple. Steve. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, I guess it was. Yeah, I guess they were co-founders. Um, I don't know what their equity split was. But, like, you have these archetypal, again, startup founders. Um, and we hold those up and we say that's the model. But the reality is more often than not, it's a bad. Yeah. Not always, but more often than not. Why? Well, first of all... Um, Often, co-founders didn't know each other all that well before they started. Mm -hmm. And you started a journey, and you think you're similar. And when things are going incredibly well, no big deal. But when you hit tough times is where you find out what your partner's really made of. Yeah. And if you're 50-50 founders, and you don't have the same risk tolerance, <clears throat> someone wants an exit, the other person doesn't. Someone is willing to have a high burn rate because they want to build something big and the other person wants to have a lower burn rate. Someone gets a dog, gets a wife, has a kid, loses interest, starts drinking too much. By the way, I've seen that a lot. Really? Starts, Yeah, honestly. Um, starts drinking too much, starts traveling. Someone loses confidence. Someone gets depressed. Depression. I've seen it a lot. And... Um, and even people who have known each other since high school get like this. Hmm. And it just becomes unresolvable if you're joint co-founders. And nobody ever talks about that because people don't want to talk publicly about these failures. And I'd say it's more often the rule than the exception. So what I like to tell people is hire your co-founders. Hmm. If you're confident or be the co-founder who gets hired. Yeah. But hire your co-founders if you're confident. Why? So you talked about jumping out of a plane. I really believe that most entrepreneurs, people who want to do it, they only are willing to do it if they have two other people lined up on the cliff ready to jump at the same time as them mm. because it's so much easier to call your mom and say, yeah, we quit our jobs, look at us. And uh, it's so much lonelier to be the one person who did it. Sure. But here's the weird thing. If you can do a business plan and good PowerPoint slides and... Uh, uh, get a few people excited, hire a couple guys who are willing to do front-end design and maybe some back-end of your product, raise a little angel money, just like the basics, then people will come join you for significantly less than 50%. Mm. And I never tell people to be ungenerous. You can give them 5%, 3%, 12%, 25%, 40%, 46%. I could name more numbers, but you could offer... Anything, it's not about the number, it's about the prenup. Mm. If you fall out of love, it's still your business. Yeah. And if they're not working out, you can still terminate. And if you hit a loggerhead, you can either choose to say, look, I want to do it my way, or you can say, gosh, over all this time, I think I trust your judgment more, let's do it your way. Mm. But you have the right to make those choices, and you don't control that in a 50-50 or a 33-33. And by the way, most founders I know prefer to do three founders, right? Like, because there's much less risk if three of us. But here's the thing. I always say to people... Why you, is that? You, I don't know, like safety in numbers, really, honestly. And, and sometimes it works incredibly well. But here's the thing. 
you come to me and you're grinding me over whether I get 18% or 19%, and it's like a death match, but you gave away two-thirds of your company to these putzes you barely know, right, before you ever came to see me. It just makes no sense. And so most first-time entrepreneurs do it. Most second-time entrepreneurs start themselves. Not all, mm. but people who have really been through it. Like when I said this publicly, like a lot of people were like, you're full of shit. But uh, people who were there, they always say, thank you for saying that. 